Hello, good morning. I wanted to take you through a couple of things with the Pivot Lab and answer questions if you have them. Um, please give those questions to me in Schoology or send me a message um, and we can work through anything that you might be running into when it comes to Pivot. But I wanted to run through a couple things with you just to help get you started and um, also walk through some of the ideas behind a few of the first assignments. So once you've logged on to Pivot, hopefully you've created your account at this point and you're able to log into the system. If not, please let me know and we can get that um, set up for you too. But once you've logged into the system, you're gonna see a list of classes. And when you go into the physics class, I'm gonna be adding assignments. Now this list will grow, but I'm gonna try to keep this manageable as we're progressing through the course. Um, and I'm labeling the assignments as such. And so when you see the U, the U stands for unit. So unit 2.1 is the um, first assignment from pivot for that unit. Point 0.5 would go to lesson 5, point 0.6 would go to lesson 6, so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to try to keep that pretty consistent as you're working through each of the pivot activities for our experiences in the course. The next thing I want you to think about is as you're looking at the pivots, and I'm using my iPad to look at this. You can do this on a computer or an iPad. It's really up to you. But the idea is pretty much the same. So there's going to be some videos and then there's also some learning objectives. So look through those learning objectives. Sometimes there's hints and tips in there. <clears throat> and as you're going down, each of these expands out. So I've already expanded the learning um, video. And this is the ice putt, dry ice puck sliding down the incline plane. And notice you can select different ramp angles. So if I tap on the bottom menu there inside the video screen itself, I'm going to be able to choose different masses and also different ramp angles. I just need to load whatever I change. So if I change this to maybe mass B and ramp angle five, I'm gonna load this up and it's gonna give me a different picture, less steep ramp and a different mass. So you can change variables in Pivot by just changing the different um, video instances that you're going along. Now we're gonna watch this one just to see what's gonna happen. And as you can see, the, the puck is sliding down. The ideas and the questions are gonna be around, um, is this a constant velocity? Is this a uniform acceleration? Those are terms that I always want you to come back to as you're analyzing this motion. Now, what uh, also, down here is you're going to maybe do some comparison. In this activity, they're going to ask you to compare your ideas to a fictional student's ideas and then see how it works. So there is a ruler. There's going, they're going to say a, a snapshot when it reaches one meter along the ramp. That's what this student is doing. And then they're calculating a um, velocity. What I want you to do is take that information that this student is using and process that. Is that the right way to analyze the motion of a dry ice puck going down a frictionless or very almost frictionless ramp? Are, is it moving at a constant velocity? If so, then they probably did it right. If not, then you have to think about how you would pursue that and how you would get that data. So part three is constructing your own argument. Do you agree? And then using the data from the video Construct your own graph to verify your prediction. And that's what these pivots are all about, taking data and verifying your own prediction. Does it work the way that you think it does and prove it with evidence from the video? All right, so how do we get that evidence from the video? Well, what you wanna do is get a ruler and a stopwatch, okay? And then it will automatically make the graph for you. Okay, so when we go back to the video instance, you can use these different tools. And notice there are tools that are built in. You can put, have a ruler, and on your iPad, you can um, tap it once to select the ruler. This is the tricky part. Tap it once to select it, and then you can pivot with two fingers. So I know you can't see this, but I'm actually using two fingers to kind of line this up. And then I can slide with one. Okay, so I'm gonna slide that up to where I think I need it to be. Um, and I can always adjust where the puck is, right? So I want to back up, I'm just using the um, either the arrow keys or the slider to right where it's released. So you see where the scissors just cut that 
string, that's where I might want the front of the puck to be zero. So I'm going to line that up, okay? And I want to measure a time here. So I'm going to get a stopwatch. I'm going to reset this so that becomes frame zero, okay? So right when the puck is released and it's going to start to move down the ramp, that's when I want to set things so that they become zero, okay? And then I can forward this and pause it. I would often step this back, so I'm going to use just this little step key right here so I can move back and I can um, match the motion that way. And I'm going to want to take a time reading maybe every 10 centimeters, all right? So now it just traveled 10 centimeters, and that's my 0.2917 seconds, all right? So I can go down to my graph then, and I can make a... I want to make a distance time graph, okay? That means distance will be on the y-axis and time will be on the x-axis, all right? So I'm going to call this time and distance. And I can put units in here. We're going to have seconds. And this will be, um, we could, should do either meters or centimeters. Now, this graph is measuring it in centimeters. You could use it in centimeters, that's fine for this case. Just make sure you label it so that we all know what you're doing. If you want to convert to meters, that's fine too. So after, in my video instance here, 0.8, or sorry, I had to go up to the top one here, 0 0.2917 or 2918. All right, so 0.29. Eight, let's say, seconds, this went 10 centimeters, okay? And I'm just going to repeat this process until I get data for at least five different um, measurements. So I'm going to go another 10 centimeters. There we go. And this is 0.425 seconds, all right? So I'm going to type this in, 0.425, and this one would be 20. All right, and you can see as I'm doing this, I'm just going to keep repeating this, coming back, sa same angle, same everything. I'm just moving this forward. So every 10 seconds, I'm going to record another value. Um, here we go. And this one would be 30 centimeters. There we go. And I'm just going to do this one more time just so you got to get the idea of it. We'll go one more down here. And that's 0.608. Okay, 0.608, and this would be at 40. <clears throat> All right, and so on and so forth. All right, um, now if you need to change any of the chart settings, you can hit the gear here and you can do the data table time and graph and help. You can add more rows by just clicking on the little dots here. Um, that's going to allow you to add more rows if you need them. Um, and also if you wanted to add in, in different columns as well. So all these things are built into the graph as you're going along. Let's do one more. Um, let's have, let's say here, um, we'll keep going to, I'm going to go down to point 0.7. We're going to go pretty far on this one. Okay. So we're going to go down to 0.7. There we go. 0.816 at 70 centimeters. All right. 0.816 at 70. Okay. And now I can get that ready to go. All right. And I'm going to want to add this graph. So now I need to select the points that I'm going to be graphing. All right, and I want to have it be a scatter graph. My vertical axis, I want that to be distance. And we can have centimeters, that looks good. And my horizontal axis, and I'm just tapping on these in order to set them, okay? Let's do that with time, that looks good. And notice here, I've got some graphing points already. And it looks like it's kind of in a straight line, but it also looks like it's kind of curving up a little bit. So the, obviously the more points you can get, the more of a trend that you can find. And then what we wanna do is we want to um, see if this 
graph supports our conclusions, right, or our assumptions. Now, if this was a straight line linear graph, then they would be going at a constant velocity. But if it's a curve, then there must be an acceleration. So I want you to analyze that and, and do so by kind of answering some of these questions, right? That's the basic thing that I want you to do for this very first pivot is just make your graph, get familiar with that, get comfortable with that, know how to um, adjust and do the settings, um, know how to maybe add some more data points and some more columns and rows and things like that. So right here, if you wanted to insert this row above or below. Um, on a iPad, sometimes you have to readjust by zooming in and out on your screen so you can see all the menu options. Um, but it will work on an iPad. It will work on a computer as well. When you're all done, don't forget to submit. Now, I'm doing this as a preview for the instructor, but there will be a submit button either at the bottom or the top. Make sure you do that so that I can see your work as well. Okay. I might um, give you a note through Pivot saying that this is an incomplete assignment. It wasn't submitted. So please do that. I can see them while they're in progress, but I can't fully grade them until they're submitted. Um, and then I can see the work that way. Okay. Um, then the next things, I'm just going to go back real quick to um, our class again. These are some of the same tools that you're going to use in all the videos for this unit. The one that's a little different is our the last one where you're gonna use this graphing activity again, but I'm gonna ask that you do something called linearization, okay? And I, before you start this pivot, please watch the video that's attached to it. It's really important. I'll put together um, another instruction or another time to meet up if you wanna go over specifically about linearization to ask questions, I'll have that available. But this is a, a process where um, you're going to want to use the same interactive so you're familiar with that you know how that works you're going to make your graph using your data table um, but then what you're going to do in part two is you're going to use the linearization process to actually get the equation for the motion so you're going to be generating your own relationship based on the data that you're pulling out of it and you want that relationship to be as easy as possible. So we're going to reduce it down to a linear relationship. Y equals MX or AX, where M or A is the slope, plus B. So we're gonna use that format for our equation, and then you're going to put in your values to get your own equation that represents this data. Now, there's a lot of ways that data can be represented, and that's what my video talks about. It can be either linear, or parabolic, or square root, or an inverse, or an inverse squared. So those types of things, you're gonna have to look at the shape of the graph and know what type of relationship are we talking about. So please watch that linearization video. It walks through all those steps, but this is the pivot where you're gonna put it to practice, okay? So maybe your graph looks like this when you first graph it, then you're done. You've already got a linear relationship. But it could also look like this, where there's a square relationship. If that's the case, you're going to want to change the values of your original data to by some fa squared factor. Okay, you're going to want to change your x values, square those, and then if it becomes linear after that, then you know that's the right relationship. So this is a little bit of a process of trial and error, but it's a way to know that your graph matches the, that data and it gives you an equation for it. Okay. So those are the processes. This activity actually walks you through all of those steps. And so when you do through part two, part three, part four, it's gonna walk you through how that linearization works. Make sure you read the steps along the way and reach out if you have some questions. All right, well, I wanted to walk you through those um, two pivot activities and just make sure that you're understanding that. Thank you and have a great day. Please reach out if you have questions. Thanks.